Hi guys, welcome back to the Do It Yourself YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to change a kitchen tap, just like this one. And I'm going to show you how to plumb it in using flexible tap connectors. If you're not already a subscriber, hit the subscribe button for me, because there's loads of content like this coming up, so there's bound to be something on the channel that'll help you out. And uh, turn your bell notifications on, that way you won't miss out on any videos I upload. Right, let's make a start. So just a few of the bits and bobs you're gonna need for this one. You'll need your usual uh, plumbing grips and adjustable spanners. You might need some PTFE tape. You might need a pipe cutter, probably 15 mil. You'll most likely need a screwdriver, flathead, and you'll definitely need a variety of sockets, normally between 10 and 13 mil, so 10, 11, 12, 13. They're the most common sizes for taps. Um, Obviously you're going to need your tap, there's loads of different ones, so whatever one takes your fancy. And flexible tap connectors. These ones are female flexible tap connectors. You can get male ones as well. You're probably going to need a variety of fittings. Uh, you might need an isolation valve or two. Or you might need a half inch to 15 mil couplers, just like these. So we don't want to be getting wet now, so make sure that we turn the water off. Now, the best way to do this, obviously you can see, before we turn the water off, we have flow. You may have to use a stop cog to turn off your water supply. In this situation, we have isolation valves. From those isolation valves, they run straight up to flexible tap connectors. Here's another example of how it might look. So your flexible tap connectors might go directly onto the isolation valves there. That's my preferred method, but it doesn't always work out like that. So to use these isolation valves, you just need to half turn them like that. And now we'll give that a test just to make sure our tap is isolated. Which it is. If you're using a stock cog to turn off the water, or in some situations gate valves inside an airing cupboard somewhere from a hot water supply what you want to do is open up some upstairs taps to let the air in otherwise what will happen is when you disconnect the old tap that's going to make a bit of a mess right so what we're going to do now is disconnect the existing tap so these are always great fun because there's never a lot of room under a kitchen sink so grab yourself your grips and your adjustable spanner and just loosen that off they shouldn't normally be too tight. And number two. Push them out of the way. Right, so this is by far the hardest bit to record. Normally you have to lay on your back in the cupboard to uh, to do this next step. If you look up there, you can see the bottom of our tap. And there is a piece of threaded rod there with a nut on there. And now they'll normally be 11 or 12 mil. So you're going to need to get your extension and a socket up there to remove that nut. That'll release the tap on the top of the sink. So this is what you're gonna need. Probably a ratchet with an extension and a, uh, in this case, a 12 mil socket. I'm gonna try and record this, but it's a really awkward place to get the camera up in there. I'll do my best. All right, that's loosened off. Unscrew the rest with your hand. Shouldn't be too tight. Hold the tap the other side, otherwise it'll fall in the sink. And if that's an expensive porcelain sink, and you go and chip it because the tap falls over, then you're gonna really kick yourself. And there you go, you see that threaded rod has come out from the bottom of the tap. So now our flexible tap connectors are undone and our threaded rod or nut is off the bottom of the tap. We can just lift the tap out. Sometimes you'll be able to pull those tap connectors straight through the hole, usually one at a time. Um, in this case we can't, so we're gonna to have to undo one of the tap connectors. They won't be very tight. And you can see that's our old tap removed. And now we'll just clean up this area around where the old tap was. Just want to get the worst off really. 
these are female flexible tap connectors. Now we need to fit them to the, the new kitchen tap next. Um, if you're just trying to watch this because you want to know how to use these, then that also applies. Sometimes you'll have red and blue marks. Obviously that means hot and cold. Now on taps in the UK, hot is on the left, cold is on the right. If you look at the bottom of the tap, you want to put your hot in the left hand hole, cold in the right hand hole. When you fit these tap connectors, they have a little O-ring on the top there. And all you need to do is put these in hand tight, okay? You don't need to do them up with any grips or anything like that, and you don't need to cram the threads up. All you need to do is put them in hand tight so that the O-ring nips up in the bottom of the tap. Just put the hot one in first. You just give them a turn till they engage. Be careful you don't cross thread them. Just like that. Just give them a turn, hand tight, but don't nip the pipe up. There we go, as long as the O-ring's completely in the hole, that will seal perfectly. It's tight enough. It should look something like that. Right, you'll have a pack of other bits and bobs come with your tap. You'll probably have something that looks like this. Now that is the bit that goes on the bottom of the sink. Some of these look a little bit different, but typically they look like this. Sits on the bottom of the sink and protects the bottom of the sink and uh, allows you to nip the tap up. But we'll worry about this when we're, um, when we're back in the cupboard on our backs. I'll show you a little bit more about that. You'll also probably get a piece of threaded rod with a nut on it like this. You'll see on this rod, there's a section here that's marked out and that needs to be threaded into the bottom of our tap. Just thread that piece of rod in just like that and grab yourself a screwdriver and just tighten that up. This little o-ring here in the bottom of the tap normally comes in your pack as well. Just make sure that's seated in the bottom of the tap nicely. What that o-ring does, it stops water from passing through from the top of the sink to the bottom. A lot of taps come with this decorative piece here that the tap sits into. The o-ring, in this case, is in the bottom of that. So what we'll do now is put our tap in place and then there's normally enough room to get both of those through. And you can just lay the tap in place. What you want to do is make sure that that's in its final position and you're happy and that's not on the on the skew whiff. Once you're happy, we'll lay on our backs down in the cupboard again and we're going to fix this piece in place with our nut. You can see them tap tails, just tuck them out of the way for now. Get that on the bottom around our tap connectors like that and it will need to slide up over that threaded rod and then we'll put this nut in place on the top of that. It's going to be really hard to record this, I might have to just show you the finished product. If you're struggling it can be useful to get someone to hold the tap at the top so otherwise it could end up moving. Hopefully you can see this but it should look something like that. Now you just need to do that nut up tight. Now it's basically impossible to do this where you guys can see but you can see there just doing that nut up, just nipping that up. Just make sure that the tap above is in its final position and that you're happy before you go nipping this up. Okay, finished product. Once you've got that tap tightened up, should look something like that. And up the top here, you can see the tap is nice and straight. It doesn't move around, it's nice and tight. And once that stage is done, we'll now move on to plumbing in our tap connectors. Right, so our old tap connectors were male tap connectors. These are female tap connectors and they have an O-ring in the bottom. Now remember, Left is hot, so that will go onto that pipe there. Right is cold, okay? These can be coiled up and moved up and down. They don't have to stay straight like that. Unfortunately, they're not long enough to actually connect straight onto the top of the isolation valves. That's my preferred method. In fact, I'll show you an example of how this would look. This is how I prefer to connect flexible tap connectors. I prefer to put them straight on the top of an isolation valve just like that. If you don't have isolation valves like this, I'd recommend you cut into the pipe. So cut the pipe off somewhere here and actually put yourself some isolation valves in place. So they're quite cheap, just like that. And you'd actually just put them on your pipe and then screw your flexies straight on the top of that. When you install these, make sure you get the flow in the right direction. You'll see there's an arrow on there. Obviously in this situation, I don't have the length on these flexible tap connectors. 
to connect them straight into our isolation valves. So, because they're females, I'm gonna to have to cut this pipe down and put a half inch 15 mil adapter on there instead. So I'll record myself doing that. That might help you guys out if this is your situation. Hopefully, if you've got isolation valves like I just show you in the other cupboard, um, you'll be done and dusted by now. You'll just do these up and you'll be on your way. But uh, yeah, I'll cut these off and show you how to do that. Just chop off the end of this pipe here. You're probably gonna get a little bit of water. Same on the hot pipe. Can now remove the old nut. Now we'll be able to install them couplers on the pipes. The reason I can't just install two more of these isolation valves onto our pipe up here because it's better for the water flow rather than passing through two sets of isolation valves. All right, so grab your coupler, stick the nut and the olive on the pipe. Hopefully you know how to use compression fittings. If not, there is a video on my channel that explains a little bit about compression fittings and how to stop leaks on them. Uh, I'll link that in the description. Put your olive, copper or brass in the nut. Put that on the pipe. Put the 15 mil end of the coupler or adapter, whatever you want to call it, onto the pipe. And we need to do that up. So just nip this up. Just like that. You don't want to over tighten that. That olive is now crushed onto the pipe. That coupler is installed. We now want to repeat the process on our cold pipe here. What we can do now is fit these flexies. Right, so we'll do the hot one first. Hot is on the left. Start to do that up hand tight onto our hot pipe. You can move these around quite a bit. They are obviously called flexies for a reason. The only thing you don't want to do is kink them. Just use your adjustable just to nip these up. Don't want to over tighten them because they have an O-ring in them. All you need to do is just nip them up. Once you've got it tightened up, just double check that it's not kinked anywhere. And now we'll do our cold, which is on the right hand side. And there we go, they are connected. Okay, moment of truth. Turn on our isolation valves, one at a time. You can hear the pressure there. That cold pipe is now under pressure. Just check that for leaks. We'll do a hot tap now. Our hot tap isolation valve is turned on now. Give that a check for leaks. Right, now just test the tap. First we'll test the hot tap and we'll make sure that we're actually getting hot water out of the hot side. Yeah, that's getting warm now. So that means we have our flexies the right way around. The most common problem is people link the cold up with the hot. Obviously, check that they're the right way around. Um, if not, you're gonna have to go back and rectify that. And the cold water's coming out of the cold side, so that's great. And then just double check for leaks on everything again. Now that all the air's out. It's also good practice just to check that you haven't disturbed any of the waste pipes whilst you've been struggling to get your arms in there. Just give everything a check, check you haven't created any leaks anywhere. And that is it, that's our tap installed. If the video gave you some value, hit the subscribe button and turn the bell notifications on so you don't miss any of my videos. I'll see you guys in the next one.